When someone talks about a revolution in electric cars, most people immediately think of autonomy, fast charging, or even the futuristic design of the models. But what no one expects is that the big change could come from something seemingly banal, plastic. Yes, you heard right, a new type of battery built from conductive polymers, or as many are already calling it, plastic batteries, is starting to turn the heads of engineers and investors. And it's not just because of the curious name, but because of the bold promises. Total fire resistance, a useful life 10 times longer than Tesla batteries, and much cheaper materials. This sounds like the stuff of science fiction, but it's already being tested in the laboratory and is starting to gain traction in the real world. The secret lies in the structure of these polymers. Unlike traditional batteries that rely on metals such as lithium, cobalt, and nickel, often extracted in controversial ways, these new batteries use materials that are abundant, recyclable, and, most importantly, stable. What does this mean? They are not only safer, but also much more sustainable. The promise of 12,000 full charge and discharge cycles without significant loss of capacity puts any other current technology to shame. And this changes everything when we think about vehicle fleets, electric buses, and even charging stations. But not everything is perfect, of course. The current energy density of these plastic batteries is still far from breaking records. At around 60 Tuisquipwine, they are still not light enough to power a large car for long distances on their own. The good news is that the second-generation prototypes, already in advanced testing, promise between 150 and 180 Tuisquipwines. This would put them on the same level as the lithium-iron batteries used in affordable models from Tesla and BYD. In other words, they could be the missing piece that will make urban electric vehicles popular once and for all. What is most impressive about this story is the safety factor. Unlike lithium-ion batteries, which can catch fire or even explode if punctured or overheated, plastic batteries simply don't burn, literally. Even under extreme temperatures, they resist without releasing flammable gases. This may seem like just a technical detail, but in practice, it represents a huge leap in the confidence of the average consumer, who has never been wary when imagining their car catching fire in the middle of the road because of the battery. This stability also reduces the need for complex cooling systems, which in turn reduces the cost of production and maintenance. Imagine an electric car that is cheaper, safer, easier to maintain, and has a battery life of decades. That is what this technology promises. And the most curious thing? It is being ignored by many big names in the industry, as if it were just another promise among many. But history shows that the biggest transformations usually arrive on the fringes, without fanfare. From a logistical standpoint, another detail is noteworthy. Since these batteries use abundant and cheap materials, such as carbon and synthetic polymers, dependence on international supply chains is reduced. This gives autonomy to local manufacturers and opens space for a new decentralized industrial chain. For developing countries, this could be a huge advantage. Imagine being able to manufacture your own high-performance battery without having to rely on expensive imports of rare metals. While the world is starting to pay attention to plastic batteries, an even bolder idea is already taking shape behind the scenes at automakers. What if the solution is not to completely replace current batteries, but to combine them intelligently? This is the logic behind so-called hybrid architectures, where different types of batteries work together within the same vehicle. In this new scenario, plastic batteries take on a strategic and very promising role, that of energy shields for the main batteries. It may seem too technical at first glance, but the idea is surprisingly simple. Every electric car experiences stress spikes, sudden acceleration, regenerative braking, and extreme temperature variations cause wear and tear that, over time, erodes efficiency and shortens the lifespan of the main cells. Lithium batteries, no matter how modern they are, are still sensitive to this type of impact. 
This is where the magic of plastic batteries comes in. They are almost immune to these fluctuations. With their incredible thermal tolerance and ability to withstand thousands of cycles without degradation, they can absorb these spikes and protect the most fragile cells. In practice, what is proposed is a type of smart auxiliary battery. Imagine a small plastic unit inside the car that is responsible for dealing with the most aggressive moments, such as when you start off with your foot on the gas or when braking suddenly to recover energy. This means that the main battery is not under as much stress and ages more slowly. The result? Cars that last longer require less maintenance and offer more stable performance for years. It's like having an internal shock absorber for the energy, absorbing the invisible jolts of the system. This approach also opens up a new perspective for the design of electric cars. With more resistant batteries occupying strategic positions in the chassis, it is possible to redistribute weight, optimize aerodynamics, and even rethink interior space. Not to mention the reduction in the cooling system, which becomes less necessary when the most vulnerable component is not suffering as much. The energy savings in this process also improve the vehicle's overall autonomy, even without directly increasing the capacity of the main pack. Interestingly, this idea of combining power modules is not exactly new. In the aerospace sector, hybrid power modules have been used for years to optimize the performance of satellites and space probes. But bringing this concept to the automotive industry, with a focus on production scale and affordable cost, is revolutionary. And if done well, it could be a game changer. This is especially true for delivery vehicles commercial fleets and taxis, which are subject to intense cycles of use and recharging. These are precisely the cases that benefit most from the longevity that polymers offer. Another relevant point is technical compatibility. Since plastic batteries do not depend on reactive metals or require complex thermal management software, they are relatively easy to integrate into existing systems. All you need to do is create a communication bridge with the main battery, and that's it. The hybrid system is active. This makes the job of automakers much easier, as they do not need to reinvent the entire car to adopt this new strategy. All they need to do is adjust a few modules, and when it comes to mass production, this flexibility makes all the difference. Amidst this scenario of silent transformations, a technology coming directly from South Korean laboratories arrives like a scream. Fiber supercapacitors. If plastic batteries are the promise of durability, supercapacitors are the personification of speed. Developed by the prestigious Korea Institute of Science and Technology, KEST, this supercapacitor not only surpassed the energy density of Tesla's best batteries, but also did so while charging in record time less than three minutes. It's almost like filling up a gas tank, but with electrons. And that changes everything, absolutely everything. The secret lies in a powerful combination, nanotubular carbon fibers mixed with conductive polymers. The result is a structure that stores energy electrostatically rather than chemically, as in conventional batteries. This difference is what allows charging and discharging to happen in practically seconds, without heating, without rapid degradation, without risk of explosion. For urban vehicles, drones, robots, or any other system that needs immediate and frequent energy, this sounds like a godsend. And the numbers don't lie. More than 100,000 cycles with almost no loss of efficiency. And if you're thinking that this kind of performance only happens in the lab, here's a surprise. There are already prototypes of supercapacitors that charge 80% of their total charge in about two minutes, and in real conditions with extreme temperatures and continuous use. This is not theory, it's practice. The most impressive point, perhaps, is the energy density, 4 at 18 white kg, surpassing the 250 WWQ -Q of Tesla's most advanced packs, including the much talked about 4680. In other words, in addition to being fast, it's powerful. And all of this with an absurdly long life cycle. Now think about it. A city car with a supercapacitor like this wouldn't need large battery packs. 
All it would need would be something compact and efficient, capable of supporting short daily trips, with the advantage of recharging in less than five minutes. Imagine the impact of this on a taxi fleet, for example, or on a network of subscription cars that need to be recharged hundreds of times a week. The savings in maintenance and the increase in availability of use are simply gigantic. It's the kind of thing that changes the game, even before the start of the game. And there's more. Because they are basically composed of carbon and polymers, these supercapacitors are much safer and more sustainable. They don't catch fire, they don't emit toxic gases, and they don't use rare metals. This makes them perfect for more sensitive environments, such as electric aircraft, hospital equipment, or vehicles in regions with extreme climates. The thermal stability and structural strength of the materials used ensure that even after tens of thousands of cycles, performance remains firm, without the sudden drops that still plague so many conventional batteries. The impressive speed of supercapacitors leads us to another equally electrifying race, the five-minute battle. And the one leading the pack in this new phase is the Chinese giant CATL, with its revolutionary sodium cell, named Naxtra. This new battery promises to not only deliver 300 miles of range on a single charge, but to do so in just five minutes. Five minutes. The time it takes to order a coffee, check your phone, and voila, your car is charged. It seems like magic, but it's engineering at the highest level. And what makes it all the more interesting is that this technology moves away from lithium and relies on a more abundant, accessible, and surprisingly safer raw material, sodium. For years, sodium was treated as lithium's poorer brother. It was there, it was cheap, but it couldn't compete in energy density. But times have changed. New generations of sodium batteries are now coming with densities in the range of 175 rivaling the lithium-iron batteries used in popular EVs. And unlike lithium, sodium works very well in sub-zero temperatures, withstanding even an impressive 40 degrees CTD Guarifu. For those who live in regions with harsh winters, this thermal stability is a gift. What's more, it doesn't catch fire easily. This alone makes sodium a viable and safe option. Another point that draws attention is durability. Katael promises more than 10,000 cycles with Naxtra cells, which, in practice, represents decades of moderate use. And since sodium does not require expensive materials such as cobalt or nickel, the final cost of the battery plummets. This paves the way for cheaper and more accessible electric vehicles. We are not just talking about technological innovations, but a complete reconfiguration of the market. Imagine entry-level electric cars costing the same as combustion models, but with competitive autonomy and instant recharging. And it doesn't stop there. Naxtra's internal architecture is designed to support peak loads of over one memory. On my choice to wonder. This means that, with the right infrastructure, these batteries can charge in a matter of minutes without overheating, without risking explosion, and without requiring complex cooling systems. This thermal efficiency reduces weight simplifies designs, and improves overall vehicle performance. It's as if engineering has finally found a balance between power, safety, and cost. The impact of this on urban mobility is hard to overstate. Vehicles that require high turnover, such as taxis, delivery fleets, and electric buses, can operate almost non-stop. All it takes is a short stop at a station, and everything starts again. This capability changes the concept of charging infrastructure. It's no longer a matter of waiting for half an hour at a station. Now, it's literally pull over, plug in, and go. Time is no longer a bottleneck. And in the fast-paced world we live in, this is a very valuable asset. Despite the exciting brilliance of these new technologies, the reality outside the labs is still much more stark. This is where the technical challenges come into full force, reminding everyone that turning promises into products requires much more than good ideas. Take plastic batteries, for example. As safe and durable as they are, 
they still face critical limitations, such as low energy density and high self-discharge. This means that if a car is left parked for too long, it can lose a large part of its charge without even moving. And that, let's face it, would be a nightmare for the average consumer. This self-discharge phenomenon occurs because conductive polymers, although efficient for intense cycles, still have difficulty maintaining a stored charge for long periods. For fleets that drive every day, this may be irrelevant. But for the owner of a private car who uses it sporadically, this passive loss of energy is a real problem. Another obstacle lies precisely in density. Even with the promised advances of 150 to 180 dolly work, they still lag behind the best lithium cells or the emerging sodium cells. In other words, the gain in safety and longevity still comes at a price in autonomy. In the field of supercapacitors, the challenge changes in form, but not in weight. Despite their incredible fast charging capacity and durability, they still face production costs. The materials involved, especially carbon nanotubes, are still expensive and difficult to manufacture on a large scale with consistency. Even with new manufacturing techniques underway, such as the continuous rolling method, the costs per kilowatt hour are still high, especially when compared to technologies already established on the market. In addition, there is a practical problem, volume. To achieve the same capacity as a lithium battery, a current supercapacitor still needs to take up much more space. This can be overcome in larger vehicles, but limits its application in compact models or mobile devices. And even if this volume barrier is overcome, the energy management system of supercapacitors still needs to evolve significantly to function optimally under real-world conditions. We are talking about thermal control, load balancing and integration with the vehicle's electrical systems, all of which need to be redesigned. And when we look at sodium batteries, the excitement also gives way to some caution. Despite all the advantages, the cells are still undergoing long-term reliability tests. And like any new technology, there is a risk that problems will only appear after a few years of continuous use. The electrochemical behavior of sodium at different temperatures and cycles is still being mapped, and estimates of 10,000 cycles can vary greatly in practice. There is also the issue of weight. Sodium cells, while promising, are still slightly heavier than lithium cells for the same energy capacity. While technical challenges still hamper immediate adoption, creative solutions are already emerging to get around these limitations, and they're literally right under our feet. One of the smartest is to use these new batteries, such as plastic ones and supercapacitors, outside of cars. Instead of placing them directly in the vehicle, why not use them as external buffers at charging stations? The idea may seem simple, but it has revolutionary potential. These electric lungs store energy from the grid throughout the day, calmly, and then release it in controlled bursts to vehicles, allowing for ultra-fast charging without bogging down the city's electrical system. Just think, a supercapacitor at a station could charge slowly during the early morning hours when grid demand is low.